how to customise your faux leather or cardstock notebooks using Cricut. Hey guys, welcome back to Bride Society. Today I'm going to show you how to customise a notebook. Um, obviously I've done this one as sort of a bride-to-be notes or you could do a wedding planner or of course any other kind of notebook would work as well. The one I'm using today is like a faux leather but I'm also going to give you instructions if your notebook is simply like a card stock as well. So if you're wanting how to transfer vinyl onto card stock without tearing it up, this is definitely the tutorial for you. So here's what you'll need. First thing we're going to do together is create this design that I've made for my project which is obviously really easily adaptable to whatever kind of wording or design choice you're going for as well. Uh, if you don't need this design step you can skip ahead to the make it stage and I'll put the timestamp for that in the description box below so if you want to skip ahead you can do so. Okay so the first thing I like to do is to create the outer shape of in this case my notebook just to give an idea of like scale of the lettering sizing that kind of thing to help me really visualize it and make sure I've got it all as I want it. So I'm going to duplicate this design over here with you now and the first thing we're going to do is hit shapes to create this background shape. I picked uh, I believe this square here with the rounded edges. You can simply click and drag that around as you wish. We now need to just adjust the size of this square to whatever the template is that you're working on. My notebook is 6 inches by 8.5 so I'm going to make that change by coming up to the top where it says size. Now because I need to change from a square into a rectangle I'm going to hit this little padlock to unlock it so that I can change these ratios. Otherwise if you don't and you just type in say 4 here the height will also automatically change to four. So I'm going to type in my measurements. Obviously you type in whatever matches yours and just lock the padlock back up. Okay, there's your new object. If you want to change the color just to match yours or so you can see better, you can do that by coming up to here where it says operation and clicking on the little colored box and simply select from any of those colors or even the advanced ones. I'm just going to select this cream sort of ivory color to match mine and then you can really start to kind of work on the design of your choice. So if you want to know how to insert text you're going to come over here to the left hand pane where it says text simply click that type in your name of choice. You can then again click and drag that around as you wish. If you wish to change the font that it's done it in it will default to Cricut Sans which you can see in the top left here under font. You can change that by hitting the drop down. It filters by either a Cricut font system or obviously bookmarked recent. So if you subscribe to Cricut Access you will be able to use any of these fonts or if you don't you can pay for individual ones. I don't have it and if you don't you'll be able to then easily follow along with mine. I've filtered by what's in my system and I believe the font I used was called something like Bri Briquette. There we go. But obviously you can scroll through and just play and see what you like. So you select that and as you can see it has now changed my font but made it extraordinarily large. So if you know what size you specifically want this to be you can adjust in the same way as we did before with the um, square slash rectangle up the top. Alternatively you can just grab any of these corners and size this way as well. So because I'm not needing to be too exact here I'm just going sort of off a of visual um, based on the size of my notebook I'm going to just kind of drag until I'm kind of like happy with what I'm seeing. I'm now going to quickly add the rest of my text before I make any other adjustments. So exactly the same procedure again. Now you will see the second time you go to do this it's not defaulted to Cricut Sans it's actually helpfully remembers the last font you were using because it's trying to be helpful. So just follow exactly the same steps that we did before for this.
Okay, so play around until you're happy with all of your fonts and sizes. Um, as you saw there, I actually did this text in a different font called Monster Art, if you're interested. Um, so as you can see over here, this is the same font as this one, but I've adjusted the sizing of the letters just because of how I wanted to fit. If you want to make an adjustment to those ratios, you can do it the same way we resized everything else by using this sizing at the top, unlocking that padlock, and just click up and down on these until you have messed around enough that you're happy with what you're seeing. Once you're done, you just lock it back up the next thing I'm going to do is change the colour of my vinyl. So if, like me, you're going to cut your design all out of the same colour vinyl, you can leave it in this default colour or you can adjust it to the colour that you're going to cut it out of just so you can get the visual of the design. And you do that in the same way we change the colour of that rectangle by choosing the colour block at the top and adjusting as you wish. I'm doing mine out of white iron on vinyl. If you're doing things out of more than one colour, so say you want the person's name to pop slightly differently, you need to definitely make the adjustment between the colours because this determines what matte Cricut sorts it onto at the cutting stage. So that enables Cricut to differentiate that this is going to be a different colour from this. So you would just select whatever the colour is closest to represent it and then when you go to make it it knows that it's a separate thing to cut out of. However I'm not doing that so I'm just going to go back. Okay this next step is really important if you have any cursive fonts on your design like I do with the Sarah and notes. If I zoom in You can see between each letter, there are still lines that are in effect making them separate letters. Now the trouble with this is that your machine will just see the line and make a cut. It thinks it's a cut line. To avoid that, so it's all, not all silly little bits, you click on the word of choice. Then come down to the bottom right where you see the word combine. Click that drop down arrow. We're going to select unite. And as you can see what it's done there, it's actually made it a joined up font. It's removed those separating lines. So it will now just do it as one cut and make it a truly cursive font. We need to do the same thing to the notes. And there you go. With the brighter B, it really doesn't matter because they are already all separate letters. So you don't need to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna shrink that back down. The one last thing I'm going to do to my design, which is not necessarily essential, but it could be helpful depending on what kind of design you've done, uh, is that I'm going to make it so that my bride to be and notes hold their position in relation to each other when I go to cut it. So as it stands at the moment, when I hit make, all of these will not sit as they are in these positions now. So if you want to make it so that it's super simple when you cut on your vinyl that you can then just take this backing and dump it on top of your project and have it all in the perfect spot that you've meticulously designed it on here, then you will want to attach each item. So to do that, I'm going to hold down my shift key and select the text boxes that I want to attach together. You can do a couple of them, you can do all of them if you want, but this, I feel like attaching those doesn't waste any vinyl. Attaching this one as well, you're going to lose all of this space and it becomes waste. So I'm going to stick with the two, but obviously you do you. Then come down to the bottom right where it says attach and click that. So now those two will hold together perfectly. All right, you're almost ready to hit make, but before you do, you need to remove the things that you don't actually want it to cut. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with all these extras that you don't need. So I'm just going to remove my original design because obviously you don't have that, so that's not a worry. Okay, come back over here. So the only thing you need to get rid of is this rectangle. If you wanna keep it for later purposes when you come back, you can leave it in, you don't just have to delete it. What you can do, which I find is quite handy, is come over here to the right-hand side, 
hover over the object in question and you'll see this little eye icon. You can hit that and it'll essentially hide it from view, but it will also hide it from the mat. So it now won't cut it, but you can easily bring it back if you think, oh, I wanna make an adjustment. Oh, I'm making an, a second one of these with a different name. I wanna be able to bring it back really easily. So that's a nice little hack there. So you're now ready to come up here to where it says make and tap that button. So as you can see, it's loaded onto my mat. Now, as I mentioned before, if you are cutting out a different colored vinyls, what you'll find is you'll have more than one mat listed here on the left hand side, represented by the colors that you chose. So Cricut will load this in in what it feels is the most space efficient way possible. If you're using scraps, you can move these around to adjust to whatever kind of size vinyl you're putting on here. You just need to remember to put the vinyl onto the part of the mat where you've effectively put your design on this kind of print preview page. So just simply click, drag around, you can even rotate them, whatever works best for you. But importantly, what you can see is these are all continuous cuts in the cursive fonts and the ratios of these two have held together. I'll just manually cut around this one and place it later. Now, very important step. Because we are using iron on vinyl because A, with the faux leather, I just like how it binds together with the fabric better. But if you are using a cardstock notebook or invitation, sign, whatever it is that you're doing out of car stock, you will want to use iron on vinyl rather than regular permanent vinyl because when you go to transfer it with regular vinyl and using the transfer tape, the transfer tape will tear up the paper. You won't be able to get it off. It's like when we used to cover our workbox at school with that sticky back plastic and it sticks to it, right? You won't be able to get it off. And this is where the beauty of iron on vinyl comes in. So you will be able to stick this down, heat transfer it, and just simply remove the backing sheet. But because it's iron on vinyl, that means you need to flick on this mirror function. So as you can see, that has flipped my design over. Now, if that means you need to readjust these again, so you should do that now. Sometimes more useful to actually flick that mirror function on first. Um, but yes, adjust as you need. And then you can come down and hit continue. Making sure your machine is connected so it can find it up here. And then we're gonna select that base material. So you can obviously browse all materials if yours isn't already here uh, and search that list. As you can see mine's here, I'm using iron-on, everyday iron-on. Simply select. Again, if you haven't already, it is just giving you that cue to make sure that the mirror function is turned on. And we're now gonna go ahead and add our material to our mats. Grab your standard grip mat, then your choice of vinyl, shiny side face down. Attach it in the top left corner or wherever you've placed your design on your virtual mat. Smooth it down and then load into the machine. Place your mat under the little guides on either side with all four star wheels evenly spaced out. Once you're ready, you're going to press the flashing arrow button on the top of the machine to draw it in. Once your machine is ready, the Sea Cricut logo will start flashing and you can go ahead and press that to start your cut. Once your cut is complete, the arrow button will start flashing again. Go ahead and press that to eject. Go ahead and grab your weeding tool. We're gonna to use this to remove all the negative space from your design. So that's all the parts of the vinyl that you don't want to end up on your final design. You don't need to use this uh, bright pad. I'm just using it so I can better see my project. So carefully peel back the vinyl, going slow just to make sure you don't pick up anything that you actually do want to be left behind. Sometimes it pulls away with it, so just go slow. Now 
back your Cricut Easy Press, if that's what you're using, and um, we're going to switch it on. And for this project, because I'm doing mine on faux leather, I'm going to make sure this is set to 140 degrees centigrade and the timer for 30 seconds. When you've done that, you'll see that the Sea Cricut logo will turn amber and that means it's heating up and it will let you know with an audible beep and that will turn green when it's ready to go. If your notebook is out of a different materials, such as paper, then the same temperature and times are actually going to apply for that as well. So I'm grabbing my notebook and putting it on my easy press mat. I'm going to just remove the bind for now so that I can get a nice flat flush surface when I make contact with my easy press. I'm going to grab my protective sheet and cover my notebook. This is just to stop it from burning, overheating or damaging or making marks on the fabric in any kind of way. Then I'm going to grab my easy press and just place down for five seconds just to preheat the surface. This makes the surface just tacky enough that you can place your vinyls down without them moving. Once you're happy with those positionings, just smooth down. You see it's tacky, so it's taken a little bit there. Then grab your heat resistant sheet and cover again. Grab your easy press, cover the entirety of the design and hit the C Cricut logo to start the countdown. So you want to apply fairly firm pressure for the duration. And once it beeps, you remove it and allow it to cool completely before you try peeling it back. Now that the line is cooled down, I'm going to slowly peel it back from the surface. I say, just go slow just to make sure it's fully taken. And if it hasn't, you can replace the liner back down, recover with the protective sheet and just add a little bit more time with your heat device. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, if you could give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more future content like this. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments box below and I'll do my best to help you out.